So welcome to this Bosque party. This is the second one we've done, but really the first time we did this ever, as far as I know. It was just an idea uh, to see if we can uh, stimulate people to get those abstracts in and also give them tips about uh, submitting to BOSC, especially if it's your first time. What will you be judged on? How you should prepare? What's different this year? So I'm going to go ahead and present. I'm Jason uh, Williams. I'm at Cold Spring Harbor Laboratory, New York, and I'm one of the organizers. I'm new to the organizing team this year. And uh, shout out to everyone helping the conference uh, work. So let me share my screen, get right to it, and then I'll take any questions. And thankfully, I'm joined by Kirsten and Yomi, who are also on the team. And so anything I get wrong, they'll yell at me and correct. Uh, so let me go ahead and share these few slides. And then it's uh, up to anybody to talk about whatever they like and or uh, have some co-writing time if they want to even just get started. So writing a great Bosque abstract. Uh, one of the things we want to make you aware of is that we are definitely using Slack this year. And no matter when you are watching this video, if the abstract deadline is uh, still coming up and we'll show you the deadlines at the end, uh, you may want to go ahead and jump onto that Slack so that you can get some help. Um, there's a link here, which I don't expect anybody to read or copy, but I'll put in the chat for those here later. And or you can go to the BOSC website and you'll find the invitation to join our Slack. So uh, we will be using that before, during, and after, uh, not just this party, but uh, the meeting. So uh, you take a look. Uh, there is the official website that you're going to go to uh, to get more information and start that process of submission. So that's at openbio.org, and you'll definitely find um, all the information there, including if there are any changes or updates. So pay attention and bookmark that. So first question that anybody might want to ask about BOSC is what kind of things can I submit to BOSC? And the good news is lots and lots of things qualify. Really, if any of your work is related to open source bioinformatics or open science um, in the life sciences, this is probably something that is going to make for a topic that Bosque is interested in. We've got a list there of things that, that we typically see, um, reproducible research, biomedical data, sometimes citizen or participatory science, uh, data science workflows, um, even also inclusion outreach and training, sort of community things. So if you do not see your topic of interest on the list, but you really do think it is related to bio, bioinformatics, and it's something that's open, um, then think about uh, submitting it or ask us a question and we will definitely give you some advice. What about that open requirement? This is really important as a reviewer. I can say it. It's one of the first things we look for because this is an open source, open science conference. We really um, require that if you are using software or you're developing software, which is a, what a lot of the people that submit are doing, uh, that you have a recognized open source license uh, and not something that's hidden somewhere. Um, as I'll get into in the review process, uh, it should be prominently indicated. In fact, you can even talk about in your abstract what license you're using. If you haven't thought about a license, there are some tips and websites uh, at the bottom or links that you can Google or you can visit um, that would help you choose a license. And of course, coming to the Slack or asking others is a great place to get started if you're not sure what license may be appropriate for your code. If you are doing something that's not necessarily software, but it, if it is documentation, if it's learning materials, uh, and many times those can be licensed, for example, through Creative Commons. Um, so really make sure that you think that what you're doing ticks the open box. Uh, what should you include in your abstract? So these are things I think you um, can guess, uh, describing fully what you did, try to write an abstract that, you know, makes somebody really want to read, understand the importance of your work. Uh, how does this fit into the ecosystem of other uh, tools or research? Maybe some example applications of your work. And also, we do love to see a community aspect of your work. So maybe you are just a lone uh, developer who's just getting started. Um, but we'd love for you to come because we want you to think about how you might grow community. Or if you do have a community, how is that working? How do you organize it? What do you think about inclusion? How are you doing those um, elements of your project? Um, please go ahead and include those things in your abstract. Okay, so now to sort of the details because these are some of the things that reviewers are gonna be looking for when they critique your abstract and decide about whether it's appropriate and 
uh, if it's going to be for a poster or a talk, and we'll get to that a little bit more. First one is relevant. So like I said, uh, it's got to have some connection to open source software, open science, open data in the bio uh, space. It's got to be available. So in most cases, there's going to be a repository, a URL where your code or your data materials are available that someone else is able to access. It's got to be open. So we talked about that licensing aspect. Also, it's got to be updated. So if you do come to BOSS, you've presented this work before, welcome back. But um, we don't want you to present exactly the same thing. What have you done differently? Or what's the update? What's the new feature? Uh, what's the new community element? Make sure you make it very clear uh, how what you're doing is new so that um, when people look at your abstract, they don't just say, wait a second, this is the same abstract that Jason submits everywhere. He's got to do a better job. So make sure you have that there. And finally, make sure that it is formatted correctly and you'll find those details on the website. Okay, winding down here, just a couple more things and then I've, I've given all the tips that I have and then we'll open it up to anybody who wants to talk. Uh, other criteria, and these are things that really distinguish a good abstract from a great abstract. First one is community impact. So do we see that the work that you're doing really fits into a larger community of science in terms of it's uh, benefiting um, uh, a, a specific group or a specific type of work, or you have uh, developed community around that tool, around that software project. We wanna see what kind of impact it's having. Novelty is also great, right? Um, there are probably um, 20 million uh, file formats and there's lots of different things that are out there that people are like, why do we have so many of them? So if you have done something new, really, really show us and explain why you think that what you've done is not just novel, but really take something to the next step and really uh, contrast with what's out there. So you want to convince the reviewer that you've done something that other people will want to hear about. It. This is something, the next one example, something I actually don't see too often, uh, but it's for you to have here. If you want to put examples of how your approach works, maybe even a figure, which I don't often see, uh, in reviews, but you have a nice visualization or you have some examples or benchmarks. Those are other things that can make your abstract seller. And then the final one, which you may not think about, but reviewers do, which is runnable. We actually uh, go in and usually check the software. So almost every time where I see that there's software available, I'm going to try to make it run and see if I can at least install it. I may not do every little bit and twist and feature, but if I can't uh, download it and make it run uh, with whatever directions you've given me, it's going to be um, you know, really uh, tough to say that that abstract is complete. You really want to make sure that what you're presenting uh, works and is really nicely documented. Uh, it doesn't have to be perfect, but think about it, that people are going to be looking at these things in detail. So try to make sure it works for folks. Um, Finally, final things here and some little twists and turns and correct me if I'm wrong, Nomi or Karsten, especially if Nomi, you know a little bit more about these things than I do. You are uh, also going to need an additional abstract because this year we are co-located with ISMB. And so you can basically take uh, the same materials that you have prepared for your boss abstract and that short abstract is going to allow that to be listed uh, in the overall ISMB conference because we're operating this year within ISMB, we're co-located with them. Also, if you want to be considered for a talk, uh, there has to be a longer abstract. Uh, this is going to be attached as a PDF as described there. The figures are welcome, but they've got to be two pages or less. And we give you uh, the example things that you need to include in that, okay? Um, oh, one question that you may have when you go to submit is what should I choose, a talk, a poster, both? Well, you can choose uh, that. And if you're accepted for a talk and a poster, you can decide later whether you wanna do both or just a talk. I know sometimes I put in for both and if I get the talk, I probably, especially when I travel, wouldn't do a poster because I don't like you know, bringing them on the plane. But uh, we're virtual this year, so you can do as much as you would like. One important thing, the talks have to be pre-recorded, So those are due three weeks before the conference. And we do still want you there live because that way you can answer questions. Um, but because we are again, not just BOSS, but ISMB, there's a larger system. So we're really gonna have to adhere to those deadlines. And for posters, 
there's going to be short video previews. So you can take a, a minute or two, whatever they give you in time. And uh, that's a really nice interactive way to show people your work and folks can view those, preview those videos and then show up to chat with you about the poster. If you require assistance uh, with fees, we are very uh, happy that we can help you with that. There is a box on the abstract submission form. So go ahead and check that box if you are interested in that. And we're not judging you necessarily on your uh, poster abstract and just say that it's really, really uh, super, super amazing Nobel Prize poster just to get fee assistance. Really, if you are contributing and you've got something to present, go ahead and check that box and we'll try to help you out. Okay, last slide, I believe, are the dates. Uh, you can find them on the website, but May 6th is a date to get it in. Uh, there are also acceptance notifications going out later that month, so that's where the reviews are going to be hard at work. There is a late submission deadline for posters in June, and by July, early July on the 8th, talk recordings are due. This year, BOSC is on July 29th and 30th, uh, last two days of ISMB, also COVID, which is itself is running along with the ECCB, European uh, Conference on Computational Biology. And also, if you haven't been, it's a really great opportunity. Join us for Collaboration Fest on the 31st through 1st. And that's really a time to work with other people on your project and other projects. Maybe you'll meet somebody at BOSC uh, that's got somebody that's got some project that you'd love to collaborate with. So all of the info is on our website.